Hi there, traders. This is Brad Gilbert with the FX Market Insight for Thursday, the 4th of April. All right, as we come into the uh, start of the Asian session here, just uh, at the early stages of it, we are sort of really looking at a, a different market to yesterday. And that's primarily because the key economic releases uh, out of, um, well, out of Australia, out of Europe, if I just scroll up here, you'll see the, uh, the various releases. So the Aussie retail sales figures, better than expected. We had um, the re Eurozone retail sales figures, better than expected, and the services final PMI numbers out of uh, Eurozone, better than expected as well. Uh, and then we also had slightly weaker ADP employment numbers out of the US and the ISM non-manufacturing numbers weaker than forecast. So what that's done for us, it's a real pain in the butt because it's really diffused Euro and the Aussie and Kiwi, which we had nice downward momentum, have been uh, sort of ricocheted back into the range and left us with no clear momentum either way. Now, fundamentally, yeah, of course, the, uh, the fundamentals don't change like the uh, technicals sort of bounce around. Euro, Aussie and Kiwi, still underlying bearish comments from the central banks, still have those pairs under uh, sort of a downward downward negative tone at this point. Now, if I just give you a look at the, the charts, you'll see what I'm sort of talking about. The, the um, I mean, it's a, like yesterday, I was, a, I was sort of just a bit disappointed with the Aussie numbers. Now the Aussie, actually, let me just give you a bit of a run through that. So the, the Aussie was around sort of 60, uh, around there somewhat when the retail sales figures came out. It sort of slowly climbed up or popped up towards 90. Then we had some uh, slightly better services data out of China. And then also, then we have the weaker US numbers. So really coming back to test that resistance line at 71.30, no surprise it really didn't go higher because even though the data is stronger, it's not a trend changer. The, the fundamental outlook that comes from the central bank is the trend and that's currently down. So you'll see, uh, you'll see it struggle from this point uh, to go higher than probably 71.30 without something else added. And that's going to be the US non-farm payrolls Friday. Kiwi clawed itself up off the floor as well. But once again, the downward bias from the central bank has capped it at 68, the figure. Uh, dollar yen, it's slowly climbing and we're starting to get into a bit of a, what in old, old school terms would call like a wedge or a pennant formation, where it should break out one way or the other. If we don't get any substantial data, it'll probably break topside and downside and just sort of keep trading sideways. Euro, once again, we, we've had uh, a bit of a diffusion here. The bounce in sterling has put a little bit of a negative pinch on uh, the US dollar alongside that weaker US numbers. And that's seen the euro squeeze above uh, resistance around 112.10. Now, it hasn't really got momentum because, once again, the fundamental outlook for, you, for the eurozone is down. So what you're seeing is, is a squeeze of short positions. It didn't quite hit 112.60, and we're now drifting sideways. And also, dollar CAD, I mean, it doesn't really like what's going on as well. Um, you know, the dollar's a little bit higher. The CAD, what's going on there? Well, you, you've got oil stronger, but uh, you know what? It's caught between a rock and a hard place with, you know, there's the pressure coming on um, Canadian Prime Minister Trudeau. You've got uh, mixed Canadian numbers. What we really need to flush this out is, is the employment numbers out of Canada and also the US employment numbers. Uh, unfortunately, they all come out at the same time on Friday. So just bringing you back to the um, MyFX Trading Hub, this is where you really need to concentrate. It is disappointing that uh, the data has not worked out in our favor, but just you know, be objective. What, what have we got at the moment? Well, we've got, uh, the, the majors are actually trading quite orderly, but, but everything is now just drifting sideways. Okay, that's one thing that we have to deal with. The core market drivers still continuing. Brexit, and uh, we are starting to hear a few more rumbles between China and the US. So that's going to escalate, I'd say, as we keep going as well. Those positive comments about they're working towards a good agreement did help the uh, Aussie and Kiwi bounce as well yesterday. That's really diffused that downside momentum. So there's a few factors there. Now, coming into where you should be focusing, well, there's not a hell of a lot coming out in Asia. So the real focus for me over the next, uh, well, 24 hours is going to be the ECB monetary policy meeting accounts. 
this is where the EB, ECB changed their structure. I think it was about a year ago. Where they, they're now going to sort of meet almost every other week. And then they're just going to give you a bit of a run through what's going on. Now, these meetings aren't policy changing meetings by any stretch, but they will give you insight into keeping up to date with what they're looking at and where their concerns are, if they have concerns on these various things. And then once again, the dollar CAD and the CAD crosses are going to be in, in play with the IBPMI numbers. Now, this is a, a pretty uh, solid number. And if there is any sort of level of variance, it can move dollar CAD around. So make sure you're keeping an eye on that. It doesn't help that dollar CAD is trading sideways, but you, you may get something out of that. And then that's, I would sort of suggest, and then as we run into uh, the end of trading today, the market will really start to concentrate very closely on Friday's events. And you've got a whole range of things. Obviously, the, the two big employment numbers, uh, the US non-farms and, and the Canadian employment numbers, the key to the whole next level of movement. All right. So that's where you, you've got to focus your attention. Just having a look here at the dollar index. Okay, we've got that nice groovy little uptrend. It still isn't broken on the, on the, on the uh, sort of daily charts. You can see how this is just trading sideways through that trend line. That's, that's a lack of momentum. And that's the US dollar sort of drifting with no significant um, you know, direction from the fundamentals. And you can see here also uh, dollar China. It's been all over the place. I still can't believe it's down here at 671. You know, once, even if they get a good deal from the US, there's, there's only one way that China can go and that's like to depreciate, which has always happened. So I can see this back to like, could rally 30 cents over the coming month or two if they do get a deal because basically no one's got any money to buy their stuff. They've been pushed into a corner about, um, you know, manipulating their, the price of their currency to sell stuff. So anyway, we've got China sort of, dangling along here it's there's no sort of real clear direction in my eyes but we are starting to see uh short-term resistance lines pop up which could potentially give us uh entry levels if, if they don't get a good deal well, to me either way it, it, this thing's going up it's not like the china is going to uh, appreciate with the way their economy's uh performing at the moment and just on the news up here i mean loads of brexit stuff uh coming out then you've got uh trump in there as well so just be aware, not much is happening. And you can see here from the US equity markets, pretty flat that uh, there's no major um, activity at the moment in the markets. All right, guys, that's it from me. There's, uh, it's a bit uh, slim pickings today. Just be aware, you can't force the market. Don't go pushing these currencies when they are drifting sideways. You may see small opportunities around the trend lines. And that's all we've got just at the moment. So just hang tight. Wait for the uh, numbers to drop and see if we can get some clear direction before you start throwing your cash around. All right, traders, see you in the 247 trade zone. Cheerio.